Hi everybody, I'm Vanessa Dyson, and if you're watching this video, that means you are the proud owner of a brand new Foff Creative Icon 2. We know that you waited a long time for that machine, so we're glad we were able to get it out to you a little bit earlier than we anticipated. And because you really are the first people to have this machine, even the dealers don't have a machine yet. So in your box with your machine, you should have found a piece of paper with a link to a private YouTube channel that goes over a lot of the new features that you're gonna find on your Creative Icon 2. So please I watch those videos before we get into our tote bag today because it's gonna explain a lot of the things and give you a little bit of practice on some of the things that we're gonna do today. Now wh what we're gonna be doing is making this really fun tote bag. And what it's doing is kind of putting into practice a lot of the things that we learned in those videos. Now, one of the things that I am not going to do today uh, that was in those videos is voice recognition. Just in case that you have an Alexa device connected in your sewing room, I don't want her to respond to the commands that I'm giving mine. So make sure that you watch that tutorial on voice recognition so you know how to do that. You also should have gotten a piece of paper in your, in your box telling you how to set that up and giving you some examples of some of the phrases and things that you can use with your device. What we are gonna focus on a lot in our project today is projection because there's so many different aspects to the projection and I want you to put into real life practice some of those features some, so that you see the benefit of how they can work in your everyday sewing. You should have picked up a kit from your dealer. We sent each dealer a kit for all of their pre-sale customers and it's got pretty much everything you need to make this project right here in the bag. So sew along with me on the video. You can stop it as we go along so that you can do whatever steps I've just explained. You also should have either been emailed or picked up a copy of the written instructions from your dealer. So it's good to have those printed, have those handy in case you wanna take any notes on them. All right, let's get started and I hope you have fun today as we sew. So we are going to start by going through some of the supplies that you're going to need as well as all of the parts and pieces that are in your kit. So you should have received a kit if you'll grab that and uh, have it handy as we go through so you can identify the different parts and pieces. You also should have um, printed instructions. So if you want to take notes on those, you might want to get those out as well. So just a couple things that, that uh, you're going to need as we go through the project today. You are gonna need an ironing station. Anytime we sew, we have to iron. So you are gonna need an ironing station of some kind. You're definitely gonna need some pins or the quilt binder clips. I like to use the quilt binder clips, but either one is gonna work just fine. I also recommend if you have the bo by, uh, Clover Bias Tape Maker, it does make things much easier. So this is the number 25. If you have a bunch of these open, it is the blue one. There are different colors depending on the uh, size that they create. If you don't have one, that's okay. We can make our bias tape without it, but it does come in handy. Another thing that I think makes things easier is our steam seam 2 When we go to work on our handles, that will make that a little bit easier. So if you have that, that's great as well. I also highly recommend the Foff quilt binder attachment. So if you have that and you've never used it, I'm gonna show you how to use that today. Um, this is a really fun, uh, great way to embellish some projects. If you don't have it, that's okay. We'll do a workaround for you guys that don't have it. You are going to need a couple cutting tools. So I recommend a rotary cutter, a 12 to 18 inch ruler. And if you have a 10 inch square, that's great. If you don't, we'll work around that one as well. And then you are also going to need 
your Creative Elite Hoop 260 by 200 that came with your machine. All right, let's take a look at the fabric that's in our kit. So again, this is our tote bag that we're gonna make. So let's identify the different parts and pieces. First off, you have a black and white stripe that's a little bit heavier weight. This is a home deck fabric. This is gonna be the bottom of your bag. So you should have two pieces of that. And then you should have a large print floral and a small print floral. Yours may be slightly different, but you, you should still have a large print and a small print. So your larger print is going to be the outside of your bag. The smaller print is gonna become your lining. Then you should have like a turquoise fabric. Mine is little squares, yours might be polka dots. Um, this will become our outer pocket, as well as a decorative element on our handles. Okay, so you should have a strip of this as well. We're gonna put this on our handles, and the other one becomes our pocket. Then you should have a black and white checked one. This becomes the lining to our pocket. And the strip of that will become the binding that we trim the top of our pockets with. You should also have a, a black and white polka dot. This becomes the very large inside pocket that we have. Then we have some fusible uh, fleece. So this will give our bag some padding and some dimension, more stability, so it doesn't just look limp. So you have a couple different cuts of this. You should have a piece of what we call tearaway stabilizer. This is what we're gonna use in our hoop when we do some embroidery. <clears throat> and then we have some fusible medium weight interfacing that we're gonna use as well, again, to give our bag some more stability. This does have a shiny side to it and that is our fusible side. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do to get started is we're gonna take that, that uh, fusible interfacing. So remember, it's got the shiny side on one side and the shiny side is the fusible side. So we're gonna place that fusible side down on our two lining pieces. So your lining pieces are the small print. You might wanna give this a quick press since it's been folded and in your kit for a little while, so it's gonna have some creases in it. I would give it a quick press and then place your, your stabilizer fusible side to the wrong side and just center it in your piece of fabric you are gonna have some extra fabric all the way around. So just position it on there so that it's centered and press. I like to press mine from the fabric side, so I usually position it and then just kind of flip it over and press it from the fabric side. So now is a good time to pause the video while you go do that. Okay, if you have your lining pieces pressed with your medium weight fusible interfacing, then we can just set those aside for right now. The next pieces that you're going to need are your two bag bottom pieces and your two bag top pieces. So we are gonna sew um, the top to the bottom on both sides of our bag. So when we get ready to sew, we're just gonna line them up right sides together and we're gonna press. But I want you to pay attention to something first. If you look at my two bag bottoms, they are cut the same. So yours should be two. They may not be cut exactly like mine, but I want you to look at your two pieces. If we look at mine, you're gonna notice that I have a little bit of white strip here and about a medium amount of black strip on this side. So when I sew that to my bag, it doesn't matter which one I sew, whether I put the medium or whether I put 
the narrow stripe, doesn't really matter. You pick. But when I sew that, I wanna make sure that I do it the same on both pieces. So for me, I'm gonna use my medium um, black stripe and that's what I'm gonna to sew to my, to my bag outside piece. Now remember, yours might look a little bit different just because it was cut a little bit different. The goal is that both of them, both sides get sewn the same, all right? So before we start to sew though, one of the great new features on your Creative Icon 2 is the projection feature. So we're going to play a little bit with that in before we sew this together, just to kind of show you how much this can help you in your everyday sewing. Okay, so I'm going to switch the camera view here so that you're looking at the screen and can see how I set everything up. So the first thing we need to do is turn our projection on. If you look over on the side of your screen in your little toolbar, you do have an icon that looks like a projected beam of light. That will open up our settings for projection setup. So the first thing we wanna do is make sure it's turned on. So you want the on to be highlighted. We have several different options in here and we are not gonna use all of those right now. We'll come back and look at some of them a little later in the project. Let's look at our settings for projection options here. You have three different levels of brightness. I like to keep mine all the way up uh, to the brightest level, but that's really personal preference. So you can set yours where you want it. And then you also have a background color. It's not really projecting a color onto the background. It is really just kind of a setting in the projector. I leave mine where it defaults, but you could um, open the color wheel and change it if you want to. Now what I wanna do is select Stitch Guide 1. So I'm gonna touch the little arrow next to Stitch Guide 1 and I'm gonna turn that on. You can choose the color of your guideline so right now mine is red. If I open my color wheel, I can change that color. I'm gonna switch it to white just because it makes it easy to see. The length of your line you can set. I'm gonna leave mine at 100, that is the max length of the line. The width of the line, and this is, um, gonna make your line a little bit easier to see. It just kind of makes it bolder. And then you can also adjust your vertical and your horizontal position. I wanna use my horizontal position and you have stitch lines or measurement lines on your stitch plate. I wanna adjust this until my beam of light is on the half inch line. So I'm just gonna plus that until I am on that half inch line. And you have markings on your stitch plate, but this does make it a little bit easier to see. So you can see the red line on my machine lined up on that half inch mark. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place my tote bag bottom and my tote bag top right sides together, matching up those raw edges. And I'm gonna line the edge of my fabric right up to that red line. That is my half inch mark. Typically when you're sewing crafts or home deck items, you're usually using a half inch seam allowance. Quilting is typically a quarter inch seam allowance and garments is typically a 5 8 inch seam allowance. So you have all of these different lines down here on your machine, but they can be a little bit difficult to see. So being able to project that beam of light makes it so much easier. So we're just gonna sew both of these pieces together. So this is a great place to pause the video and go ahead and sew both of your pieces. Remember, make sure that when you do your second one, you're sewing the same orientation of the stripe so that it's when we do our side seams, everything will match up perfectly. 
All right, now that you have sewn your top and your bottom piece together, you're going to press that seam open on both pieces. So just give it a really good press. Make sure it's pressed open. Then you're going to take your 15 by 16 and a half inch piece of fusible fleece. It has a rough side and a smooth side. You're going to place that on your fabric. Rough side down. And you're just going to center it. You are going to have some fabric all the way around the edges, just like we did when we did our medium weight fusible interfacing. So just press that in place and you're going to do that to both pieces. All right, we should have both sides fused with our fusible fleece. So both sides are done, and now we're ready to go back to the sewing machine. Okay, we're gonna be back at our sewing machine. We have the straight stitch still loaded, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust our stitch position. So open stitch edit, and right here at the bottom you see position. We are going to plus that all the way up to four. And what that's doing is it's adjusting our needle position to the right. Also, because I'm sewing on a layer of fabric as well as a layer of that fusible batting, I'm going to increase my stitch length to 3.0. And now if we come back over to our machine, we are going to attach the bi-level guide foot. Your bi-level guide foot has a little blade that runs right down the middle of the foot. So we're just going to attach that and now what we want it to do is line it up so that that little blade is going to stitch right in the ditch of that seam. So just put your presser foot down and make sure it's going to ride right along. That blade is going to ride right in that seam line. If your projection is still on, you can turn it off by touching the projection button over here. You can turn your projection on or off either place. You can use the button on your machine over here by above the needle or you can use the button on your uh, screen. So either way. All right, and now we're ready to sew. Just keep that guide right in that seam line and we're gonna stitch all the way down on this side. Turn your piece around and stitch all the way down on the other side. And we're gonna repeat that for both pieces. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is to do this decorative stitching on one of the pieces that we just finished. So take one piece and set it aside and take your other piece and mark a line. I used a wash away um, marker and you wanna draw a line in one of your stripes. I would suggest using a stripe that's closest to the top of your bag. So I'm using this white stripe. Yours might be black depending on how your piece was cut and come in about two inches from the outside edge and just draw a line in that stripe. That's where we're gonna start our stitching. I don't wanna start it all the way over here where it's gonna get caught in the seam line. I'd like to start it part way over. So two inches is a good spot. So just mark that with something that either a wash away marker or a chalk aligner. And then we're gonna take a look at a couple other features that you have on your Creative Icon 2. We're gonna look at projection again. 
And this time, we're going to open our projection. And again, we're gonna turn it on. And this time, we're gonna use our stitch preview. So I'm going to turn stitch preview on. And that is gonna give us a projected view of the stitch that we select on our fabric. The other thing that I wanna turn on this time is our grid. So I'm going to open the grid and we're gonna turn the grid on. And now you have several adjustments that you can make in here with your grid. And one of those is setting the size of our grid. So that is right here with your plus and your minus. You can set the size that your grid will be. We're going to leave it at 10 millimeters. If yours did not come up at 10 millimeters, just use your plus or your minus until it gets there. And we're gonna make the color green. So if yours is not green, simply touch your color wheel and select green. Okay, we're gonna leave the position where it is. You can collapse those windows so that they're not um, taking up so much space on your screen. If one of your stitch guides is still on, you can turn that off. Anything that is highlighted in orange is on. So we can see that my stitch preview is on and my grid is on. Both of my stitch guides are turned off. If yours are on, simply open it and turn it off. All right, so you can close your projection window and we are going to open up our stitch menu. We have a whole new category of stitches on our Creative Icon 2. So let's go to category three and we are going to go to subcategory four. This whole menu is maxi hand embroidered stitches. These are all brand new to our Creative Icon 2. They are what we call maxi stitches. They have some sideways motion to them, so they are all wider than nine millimeters. We are gonna select stitch number 15. Once you've selected that, you can close your stitch menu. Now another uh, feature that you have on your machine is what we call stitch repeat. So we're gonna open that up down here at the bottom. And we have two programs in here. We are going to open the single stitch program. And what that allows you to do is to set an exact number of repeats for that stitch pattern. So we are going to plus that up to 13. So what that means is it's going to do 13 repeat, repeats of this stitch and then it's automatically going to stop for us. I love that. This is a little tricky to get on the camera so that you can see it really well. So I turned my grid off for a moment and here you can see my stitch preview. So this is what my stitch is gonna look like. And if I started stitching right now, that's exactly where it would stitch. So here is my line that I drew where I want my stitching to start. So I'm going to move in position so that my stitching will start at that point. So it's gonna start right on that line. I have threaded my machine with a rayon thread and put an embroidery bobbin in. You can use any color you want. You want it to show up on your stripe. So I have chosen a pink and I have my two A foot attached as that's the foot that's recommended for this stitch. So I am positioning so that my stitch will start on the line that I drew. I wanna be a little bit away from this edge of my stripe. I don't want it to be right next to it because this stitch does have some sideways motion. That means my fabric is going to move side to side as well as forward as it's making that stitch. I don't want to get too close to this. It'll just look better if I stay a little ways away from it. So now I'm going to turn my grid on so that you can see what that looks like. 
So now you can see my grid. And what I want to do is I want to line the edge of my stripe so that it's parallel with one of these grid lines. <clears throat> and that's going to help me keep it straight. Now, because my fabric is going to move side to side, I can't line a grid line up right on the edge and have it stay there because my fabric is going to move side to side. But what you want to watch is that the edge of your stripe stays parallel to the line, the grid line that's closest to it. So that's really what you want to watch is just keep that line parallel. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start stitching. And my machine will automatically stop when that stitch pattern, remember we set 13 repeats, so when it has done 13 of those, it will automatically stop. So all I'm doing is watching that grid line and making sure that it stays parallel so that I'm not sewing perfect. that repeat, then I can strictly concentrate on keeping my fabric straight. I don't have to watch my design and, and try to figure out when it's okay to go ahead and stop. I'm just going to let it stop on its own. That's the beauty of being able to set that. about done so there we stopped I'm gonna use my thread cutter to cut my thread and you'll see that we've done a beautiful row of stitching right along there now what I want to do is start the next row down a little bit so I want to come down a couple inches just to give it some more interest, rather than having all of them just lined up perfectly straight, I wanna come down a little bit and start that next row. I'm gonna leave it at 13 repeats. And again, now because I've shifted a little bit, I'm going to use this edge of my stripe and watch that grid line to make sure that I'm parallel. So you're gonna stitch another one and then come down a little bit more and stitch a third one. So now is a good time to pause the video and go ahead and do that. All right, you're doing great. I hope you're having fun as we work on our tote bag and that you're learning lots of new things about your creative icon too. So you should have your decorative stitching done. You can set that aside. The next thing that we're going to work on is creating our pocket for the front of our tote bag. So we're gonna be doing that in embroidery mode. I'm gonna leave my pink thread on and my embroidery bobbin in, and you're gonna to wanna to find your 14 inch by 18 inch piece of turquoise fabric and hoop that in your 260 by 200 hoop that came with your machine. Now your fabric may look like this one, there's two different fabrics in the kit, so you got one or the other, either the one that has the little dashes on it or the one that has the little squares on it. Either way, hoop that up with your stabilizer, so your stabilizer came in the kit as well. Hoop those together in your 260 by 200 hoop. Try to hoop it somewhat centered, but it's not critical. We're gonna trim this down after we create it. So after we stitch it out, We'll trim it up so you'll, you'll have plenty of room. Just make it somewhat centered in there. And we're going to uh, work on our embroidery screen in order to create that. So you're gonna wanna go into embroidery edit screen and I'll show you how to do that. So to go to embroidery edit screen, I am simply gonna touch the home icon at the top center of my screen and choose embroidery. And this will transition me into my embroidery edit window. 
Now that I'm in here, the first thing I'm going to do is select a hoop. So I'm going to open hoop options at the bottom of my screen and I am going to select the Creative Elite Hoop 260 by 200. That hoop does come with your Creative Icon 2 and that is what we have our Aqua Fabric hooped in. So I'm going to touch the hoop options again to close that window. And next we need to load a design. So our designs are found under the flower icon. That is where our load designs is. But before we do that, I do want to point out a new icon. I'm so excited about this one. The one right below it, it, it also looks like a flower, but it has a little extra symbol on it. This is actually the My Sonet Library designs. So now you can view these designs right on the screen of your creative icon too. And it'll take a minute here for these designs to populate. You were offered a free trial subscription with the purchase of your Creative Icon 2. So if you have activated that, or if you have a paid subscription, then you have access to all of the designs that are in here. Like I said, over 7,000 designs are built in. And you can stitch these out and view them right here on your screen. If you don't have a subscription or have not activated your free trial subscription, you will still be able to see all the designs. You just would not be able to stitch them out. However, you can go to the MySonet library on a computer and you can purchase individual designs. So we are, I'm gonna close that one and we are going to go to our load embroidery design. So this is our built-in designs. I am in the signature menu. So that is the first menu and I'm going to choose design number 18. Reminds me a little bit of like a spirograph type design. So I'm just gonna load that there on our screen. And the next thing I wanna do is I wanna add my name in here. So I am gonna touch the load font and that opens up our built-in fonts. I am gonna go to the curls font just because it's one of my favorites if you have a relatively short name, say, you know, five letters or less, you can probably use curls 30. If you have a longer name, you're going to want to use curls 20 in order to fit it inside of our circle design. I'm going to try curls 30 and see if I can make it work. So when you touch a font, it does open up a keyboard on your screen. So I'm gonna use a nickname. My nickname for Vanessa is Nessa. That's what my family calls me. So I'm gonna type in my name and notice I did shift, use the shift key to um, transition to a lowercase letter. Once you have your name in, you can touch this little arrow here on the side and that will close that keyboard. And then I'm gonna to touch my letter A and close my load font window. Now, I don't know about you, but to me, my letter N feels like it's way too far away from the letter E. And that happens sometimes with some of the fonts, and it's just, it's just the way the system sees the individual letters and places them next to each other. But not to worry, because we can fix that. We have a tab up here, it's the third icon down. It looks like three pieces of paper stacked on top of each other, and that is our layers tab. When we open that, what we see is any of the designs that we have loaded and the order that we loaded them. So my name is already selected. You can tell it's a different color here. And I do have the box around it back here. So that is what is selected and I want to ungroup it. So when I created my name, it came in as one design, but I could select it and then touch ungroup, and now each letter is seen as an individual design. So I am gonna choose just the letter N, and I'm gonna close my window so it's out of my way. I'm gonna open Edit Design at the bottom of the screen. And now with just my N selected, I can move that design and put it more in line with the rest of the letters. So I think that looks much better. I think the spacing is much better there. 
So I'm going to open layers back up again. And I'm going to choose select multiple and select each letter of my name again. I don't want the circle selected. I just want the letters of my name selected. If your name is longer, you may need to swipe up a little bit to select all of them. Once I have all of my letters selected, I'm going to touch group. And that puts it all back together as one design. I like to regroup it because if I accidentally move one letter and get it out of alignment with the rest of the text, then I've got to reset everything. So by regrouping it, now if I move my name, the whole thing is going to move together. Okay. So what I'd like to do first is I'm going to select my circle and I'm going to touch the center wheel in my control wheel. Move is selected. That is the one that's highlighted. So if I touch in the center of my control wheel, all that does is it puts that circle centered in the embroidery area of my hoop. So I know it's going to be placed in the middle. Remember I said we were going to cut this down a little bit after we stitched it out. This just gives me more wiggle room because it's going to make sure it's in the middle of my hoop. I want my name to be positioned up a little bit so I'm happy with where my name is situated. If yours is not positioned up higher in your circle then you may want to touch that and move it up a little bit. I know your, your thought might be I want it centered in my circle, but there's a reason, so bear with me a little bit and we'll get there. Once you have that positioned, then we can touch go to stitch out mode. When we go to stitch out mode, we transition to a screen that's called Welcome to Embroidery Stitch Out. And there's a lot of information on this screen, but the one thing that I do want to activate on here is the one color. I want to stitch this design out all in one color. I don't want to make a bunch of color changes. So it is easier to just touch that right here on this transition screen and that is going to monochrome my design. Touch OK and now it's going to give us the message to attach our hoop. So once you get that message you can go ahead and attach your hoop and then just stitch your design out. So this is a great time to pause the video and go ahead and stitch out your design. So your embroidery should be done now. Leave it hooped, don't unhoop it, but take your hoop off your machine. And if you did unhoop it, no big deal, just re-hoop it. Um, what I wanted to show you next is we're going to go back in and we're going to place something in here to fill up this space. Have you ever done an embroidery and you get it all done, you take it out and, and you unhooped it and you're looking at it and you're like, oh, I wish I would have added this or I, you know, this just needs, there's an empty space here that needs to be filled. With the projection in Embroidery Edit, we have the ability to to rehoop something or leave it in the hoop either way and we can project part of our design onto our fabric and move it around and position it where it needs to be in relationship to what's already on the fabric. It's a wonderful feature and I'm really excited to show you that. So if you already unhooped it, rehoop it. Doesn't have to be hooped exactly the same. If you didn't unhoop it, that's great. Just leave it hooped. And we're going to go on to the next step and fill up that void. All right, so if your screen still tells you that your embroidery is finished, you can touch OK. And then at the bottom of your screen, return to Embroidery Edit. And what we want to do is we want to add another design in here um, to place it below the name and fill in that space. So I am going to go to my design menu. And this time we are going to swipe all the way over to the mini designs. That is the last category in here, so you're going to have to swipe for a minute. Choose your mini designs and then scroll up until we can do design 40. And bring that on your screen. Now just a little tip. 
I want to rotate this about 90 degrees so that it's more like laying underneath my name. So if you touch the rotate here, then you can touch in the center of your control wheel and it will automatically rotate at 90 degrees. Now you can certainly grab the rotation handle and you can rotate your design that way. But sometimes it's just easier if you know you need it 90 degrees to just touch the 90 degree in the center. <clears throat> when you're rotating, you can also use the arrows to adjust your rotation as well. Now that I have it rotated, I want to duplicate it. I want two of them. So I'm going to touch my duplicate. And then I'm going to mirror image that second one that I brought in. And now we can just move those so that our design is, um, and if you're having a hard time moving them, just go to layers and select the one that you want to move. And sometimes it's easier to do it that way when you have several designs in here. And what I'm trying to do is position it so that my stems are overlapped. So it makes a nice looking design. Once I have the stems the way I want them, and if you want to zoom in, here's your zoom slider. So if you want to zoom in some so that you can see really well and make sure that you have your stems the way you want them, please do that. And then I just bring it back so that I can see my whole design again. All right, now I'm gonna go back into layers and I'm going to select my two stems. So that's all that's selected and I'm gonna group that. It just makes it easier to adjust that and position it where I want it to be, okay? So I'm just positioning that there and now Let's take a look at that projection. Really, we could delete the rest of our design. So if I go back into layers, and just to show you, I am going to delete the circle design and I'm gonna delete my name. So the only thing that is in my hoop now is my two stems. I'm gonna turn on projection so we're gonna turn it on and you're gonna notice that it tells us to attach our hoop. And we need to have our hoop on there in order for that, uh, in order to project that design onto our hooped fabric so that we can see where we wanna place it. So touch okay once you've attached your hoop. And now, we have our brightness and our background color. I'm leaving mine um, all the way up at the brightest level. Uh, your color, I'm going to leave mine. You can change it if you want to. And then down here we have move hoop. Okay, so remember if you have watched the earlier videos that we posted on projection and embroidery edit, then you know how this works. We want to move our hoop or move the design on your screen. Your projection is in front of your needle. So you, depending on where your needle is positioned right now, you may or may not see your design projected on your fabric. I happen to be able to see mine projected. If you can't, then you're gonna need to move your hoop because your, your needle is not in a position to be able to project that design. If you can see the projection, then you can just move it on your screen and watch in your hoop as it moves and place it where you want it. If you need to move your hoop until you can see that projection, then use your arrows here in your move hoop in order to, and I'll, I'll close my edit design so you can see that better. You can use the arrows to move your hoop so that you can place that design exactly where you want it in your fabric. Okay, so I'm going to bring mine down just a little bit more. I think that's good. You can fine tune a little bit if you need to by moving your hoop until you are 
completely happy with where that design is placed. And this is your project, so you place it really where you want to. All right, once you've done that, you can close your projection and you can go to stitch out mode. I'm going to leave my thread color the same because I'm just going to let it be a monochromatic design. But if you want to change your thread color, you certainly can do that. All right, and I am ready to stitch this out. All right, so my embroidery is finished. I have trimmed it down to a 10 inch square using my 10 inch square ruler. If you don't have a 10 inch square ruler, just trim it down to a 10 inch square, keeping your design centered. Then we're going to take, you should have a piece of 10 inch square fusible batting. So remember the rough side is your fusible side. And we're going to attach that. And what I want you to do is line up the top of your fusible with the top edge of your embroidered piece. So you are going to have a little bit of excess all the way around. Make sure that it is the top of your design. Okay, so we want that fusible fleece lined up with the top edge of your design. Then we're going to place your 10 inch square of lining fabric, which should be the black and white check, right sides together. And we are gonna stitch around three sides. You can leave the top open. We're going to put a piece of binding strip on that a little bit later and that will close that up. So stitch your sides and your bottom turn it right side out and press it, and then we'll be ready for the next step. Okay, so I have my pocket complete, my lining is sewn, and I have flipped it right side out and given it a good press. So we're just gonna set this piece aside for now. We'll come back later and attach the binding across the top of the pocket. What we're gonna work on next is our inside pocket to our tote bag. So inside our tote bag, we have a nice deep pocket in here that you can put a ruler in, you can put your scissors in, whatever you wanna put in there. So we're gonna work on that pocket and then we'll do the binding on both pockets at the same time. So in your kit, you should have two pieces of a 12 by 18 inch black and white polka dot. There's two of them and a piece of fusible interfacing that is the same size. Give these pieces a quick press because they will have a crease in them from being in your kit. And then take one piece and fuse that interfacing to it. Okay, doesn't matter which piece because they're both exactly the same. Just line them up and fuse that interfacing. And then we're gonna take your fused piece. So this piece I've already fused with the fusible. And we're gonna sandwich that fusible in between the two. So I'm gonna take one piece and lay it right side down. Put my other piece on top, right side up. And this is going to be our quilt sandwich because we're gonna make a quilted piece for that inside pocket. Okay, so when you have that ready, you might wanna stick just a couple pins in there to kind of hold it together. And we are gonna trim this down when we're completely done. So as we start sewing, if your fabric shifts a little bit, it's not a big deal because we're gonna trim it down to size. Okay, so once you have that, we're ready to go back to our sewing machine. Okay, we are back in at our sewing machine. I am in sewing mode and I have a straight stitch selected. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our quilt sandwich that we made and we're going to quilt this in a grid fashion to make our pocket. So to make that a little bit easier and to make it easy to 
to keep my lines a consistent distance from each other as we do that grid quilting without having to mark my fabric or anything like that, we are going to turn our projection back on. So I've got it turned on. I'm going to leave my brightness and color where it was at. I don't need my stitch preview and I don't need any stitch guides. So if those are on, you can turn all of those off. The only one we really need to use right now is our grid. So I'm going to open the grid so that we can set that one up. I want my grid size to be at 10 millimeters. If you need to adjust that, you can plus or minus to get it to 10. I'm going to leave my color on green because that shows up really good on my fabric. One of the things that I want to change is I want to change the angle of my grid to 45 degrees. So you could use your arrows and change that or we do have a quick set button right here for 45 degrees. So I'm simply going to touch that and that will change the angle of my grid to 45. I'm going to close my projection. I'm going to open my edit stitch and because again I'm sewing on two layers of fabric and a layer of that fusible batting, I'm going to increase my stitch length to three. Just will give you better results. I also have attached my quarter inch foot and as you can see on my screen, if you watch the earlier um, individual videos of the features of your Creative Icon 2, then you should have seen one on the um, artificial intelligence, which tells us what foot we have on our machine. So I do have my quarter inch foot on my machine and I have engaged IDT. The IDT makes it really easy when you're quilting because it's feeding those layers of fabric through easier. So you wanna make sure that you have that engaged. Now it's really hard to get the camera to focus on this grid. It's hard to get it in the right position. But what I want you to see is I have taken a corner of my quilt sandwich. Okay, so it doesn't matter which corner you start with. And what I've done is, is I've lined one of the grid lines up with the edge of my fabric here and another grid line up with the edge of my fabric here on this side. And I'm probably in about an inch and a half or so from the corner. And this is just giving me the ability to, to get that in the right angle to make that first row of stitches. That's all I'm going to use the angled grid for is to do that first row of stitching. And I'm just going to stitch straight across that corner just like that. Once you reach the edge, you can use your thread cutter and just trim that thread, okay? Now I'm going to come back over to my screen and I'm going to adjust that grid again. I'm going to take this back to zero, so I don't want the 45 anymore. If you touch and hold on that 45, it will bring you up a keypad and you can simply type in the zero. So now that puts my grid back squared instead of on an angle. I also want to change my grid size because I want the maximum grid size to space my lines with. So again, I'm going to touch in that box and bring up the keypad and I'm simply going to enter 30. That is the maximum size of our grid and that's where I'm going to put that. Okay, so if you'll make those changes, then we'll start sewing again. So now I have turned my quilt sandwich so that I can put one of these grid lines right on top of that row of stitching. So this is where I stitched that angle across the corner. So I'm placing a grid line right on top of that. And that is going to keep me straight as I start again and stitch another row. So I'm just keeping that grid line right on that fabric. Cut. 
and I'm just going to keep moving across. So I'm going to put the grid line, a grid line right on the stitch that I already stitched. Line it up to my edge and go work my way across. And you're going to continue to do that all the way across to your piece. So now I have quilted all the way across my piece on the diagonal. And now I'm simply going to follow those same steps, turn it around and go the other direction so that I have a grid quilt. So same process, do the same steps going the other direction. Okay, I've taken my quilted piece and I have trimmed it down to a 16 by 10 inch rectangle. So you can cut off, so it comes out to about three quarters of an inch around all three sides. You do get a little bit of shrinkage when you quilt something, so it's not gonna be a full inch off of each side, but you're gonna trim some off of each side makes everything nice and neat. Set that aside for a moment. In your kit, you have two one and three quarter inch wide strips of fabric. They should be the black and white check cut on the bias. We are going to sew these together to make one long piece of binding. And the easiest way to do that is to actually put them right sides together overlapping them a little bit like that. You can pin it and then you're going to sew from this corner to this corner. And then when you open it up, it's going to be attached and you're going to have a nice flawless seam there. So go ahead and go to your sewing machine. Sew from this corner to this corner, trim it and press it and then we're going to use the quilt binder attachment. So now we're ready to finish our pockets. So a couple things that you need. You need your quilted piece that you just finished. You need your pocket, your front pocket that we did earlier. So we're gonna put that binding across the top where we left that open. So we're gonna close that up with binding. And you're gonna need your long strip that you sewed together to make a long continuous piece of binding. And there's plenty more here than what we really need, so you've got lots of room to practice a little bit. And if you have this, I would really like you to use the Fop Quilt Binder attachment. This is the best attachment. I love this. And you know, you might think, well, I'm not really a quilter, so what am I gonna use that for? I will tell you, I rarely use it to quilt a quilt with. I use it to add um, a contrasting fabric instead of hemming something. So I make a lot of kids clothes and I will, instead of hemming it, I will put a band of contrasting fabric around the bottom using that quilt binder. It is so quick and so easy to do. It's great to make straps for little sundresses. I mean, it's, there's just endless uses for it that really have nothing to do with quilting. So if you've never used it before, it can be a little bit intimidating because it is a big piece of um, equipment that's it's pretty large. So it's a little intimidating maybe, but I'll walk you through how to do it. There is also a video built into your Creative Icon 2 under your tutorials, under accessories. So... I'll walk you through it today, but you may also want to watch that video that's built into your Creative Icon 2. And if you don't use it for a while and you need a refresher, you know that it's there on your machine. If you don't have the quilt binder, then there are alternative suggestions for doing the binding on your pockets in your printed um, directions. So please refer to those if you don't have the quilt binder attachment. So with that, we're gonna get started. All right, to get started, I would recommend that you make sure that you have a full bobbin because once you attach your quilt binder, it is difficult to open your bobbin case. So make sure you have enough bobbin thread in there. 
And then your quilt binder does come with a foot. And that foot has a little guide or a flange on the outside edge of it. So you can go ahead and attach that foot and engage your IDT. Now the next thing we're going to want to do is attach this plate. So you're going to notice the plate has a hole back here and that's going to sit over top of the hole at the back of our needle plate. And then there's a little oval bar up here in the front and that's what our quilt binder is going to sit on. On the bottom side, it's a little hard to see it on camera, but there is a little peg right here. So you have two holes on your needle plate. The little peg sits in the front hole and then the hole situates over top of the back hole on your needle plate. And then you're simply going to use the screw that came with your quilt binder and attach that. Okay. And now your big quilt binder piece has a slot here on the front of it. So you can see this slot right here. And that just sits over top of that oval in the front. And we're going to use the two washers that came, stick them right over top of those holes, and we're going to use the other two screws to attach that. So you have two washers and two additional screws. And this allows us to loosen these and then we can slide the attachment to get it into the position that we need it to be in. So next, we need our long strip of fabric. And I take one end and we are just going to cut a point on that end. So I, I mean, you can do it however you want to. I just kind of fold it in half and cut so that I have a nice point. Put your fabric in wrong side towards you and we're going to slide it in and then it, you're going to want a stylus or tweezers or something just to kind of help pull that through. Okay, once it gets through, I, I know my hand's going to be in the way for a minute here. We're going to grab a hold of that and we're just going to use your stylus or your tweezers and push that into that little um, indent that you have there and pull it back underneath the foot and that's what starts it turning so that it's turning your edges under. I'm going to put my foot down and really what I want it's kind of hard to see I'm going to see if I can move this camera a little bit I want the edge of my fabric over here that I'm seeing on the right hand side, I want it to be to the left of that little flange. So right now I need to adjust mine because it's too far over to the right. So I'm going to loosen my screws, put my foot back up and I'm just going to slide that over a little bit. so that when I put my foot down, that is in a better position, okay? Now the other thing I wanna check is where is my needle gonna hit my fabric? So if I just put my needle down, I'm a little ways away from the edge of my fabric, probably more than I really wanna be. So this is where you can adjust that uh, needle position again. We did that earlier. Remember we moved our needle position. So this time I'm going to touch the minus button because that's going to move my needle to the left. 
and I'm going to get a little bit closer to that edge. You're going to have to play with it a little bit to get to the position that you want to be in. Then I'm going to take my large quilted pocket, put my presser foot back up again, and I'm just going to slide this in there with that binding going over the top of it. So you may have to just finesse it a little bit to get it in there and get it started. And don't worry if you're not perfectly at the edge. This is going to get sewn into a seam. So once I have that in there, I'm just going to start sewing. And if I want to adjust my needle position a little bit more, I can do that. So I'm adjusting my needle position just a little bit more. And that is really all there is to it. I'm just feeding that through. And I'm not even touching my binding. I'm just letting the machine do the work. I'm gonna come right off the edge there, take a couple stitches, and now I'm going to take my embroidered pocket. I'm not even cutting anything. I'm gonna take my embroidered pocket and I'm gonna raise my presser foot up a little bit and I'm gonna slide this in there. And I'm just gonna continue sewing. So now I'm going right across the top of that embroidered pocket. Okay, now if you remember, we have two raw edges on our quilted pocket. So I'm just gonna trim that off from back there and you can see I've got a nice edge up here and it's caught it on both sides so it looks equally good on both sides. And so we've got binding across one side. Now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to put the binding across the other side. So I'm going to put it across the bottom. We got it on the top and now I'm going to put it on the bottom. So again, I'm just going to feed that in there and then I'm going to stitch all the way across again. Now when I get to the end of the other side of my quilted pocket, I still have quite a bit of the binding left. I am just going to keep stitching for about six or seven inches. And this is an easy way to make like um, belt loops. It's an easy way to make spaghetti straps, anything like that where you just need a narrow, uh, kind of like a tube really. Now I'm gonna pull the rest of that through, but you see I've got um, a section here that is just the binding sewed together. So it's sewn together on both sides, so it's nice and, and firm. It's not gonna come apart. And we're gonna use that for something in a little bit. Now, wasn't that easy? So don't be intimidated by the quilt binder attachment. Okay, so now on your pocket, on your inside pocket, you can go ahead and trim those edges right up to the edge because they're going to get caught in the seam allowance. So you can do that on the top and the bottom pieces, all four, just trim it right up close to the edge. On your outside pocket, leave a little bit at each side because when we sew your pocket on, we'll tuck that behind because we don't want those raw edges. Our sides are already finished on our pocket. So when we sew it on, we want a little bit of extra hanging off the sides that we'll tuck around to the back. And then you should have your piece of strapping that we did with the rest of the binding. So you only need about five or six inches. All right, we only have one thing left to do before we start putting it all together. 
So our next step is going to be decorating our straps and then we'll be done with all the parts and pieces and we'll be ready to put it together and it goes together so quickly. So I hope you're having fun. We'll get started with sewing the pockets on in just a minute. So you have two front pieces, one that you did your decorative stitching on. Set that one aside and take your other front piece and we're going to pin our outside pocket to the outside front of our tote bag. You want to place it about four inches down from the top and equally on the sides. And just pin it in place. Make sure that you fold your little tab under so that we have a nice edge at the top of our pocket. And then you're going to take this to your sewing machine and you're going to use that bi-level foot that we used a little bit earlier. That foot actually has an indent on the bottom that really accommodates for the different layers of thickness that we have here. So it's going to ride with that indent riding on your pocket and that's gonna help that ride and feed better. So you're gonna stitch down both sides and across the bottom. So stitch down, across, and back up. I would reverse a couple times right up here at the top edges to give you a nice uh, good attachment there. Now you can also adjust your needle position because you're gonna run that blade right along the edge of your fabric. So you're going to adjust your needle position over to the left so that you're close to the edge, but you still have a good little seam there. So when you're finished, it's going to look something like this. So you can see I'm a little ways in on the sides with my stitching. Okay. Then you're going to take one of your lining pieces. So your lining piece was the small flowered piece that we so, um, fused some interfacing to. And again, we're going to come about four inches down from the top. And this is going to go all the way across. So you can just pin the sides. And then you determine how many pockets you want and how wide you want those pockets to be, depending on what you think you're going to put in them. And then you're just going to sew from the top down wherever you want those pockets or if you don't want any additional pockets here if you just want one pocket then you don't have to sew any of those you're going to come across using the same foot and you're going to sew right across the bottom of your of your pocket down here so again you're going to let that foot ride right along the bottom and you're going to stitch that all the way across. Adjust your needle position as needed. This is going to get caught into our side seams when we sew it all together. So if you want to just do a little bit of stitching down here close to the side, you can. But you don't have to because, like I said, it is going to get caught in when we put it all together. Once you have that done, we're going to be ready to do our straps. All right, let's get our straps ready. So you should have two pieces of um, your turquoise fabric. We're going to put that on the top of our straps to kind of decorate it a little bit, make them look a little fancier. You should have two pieces of black webbing. If, if it's only one piece, then you're gonna just cut that in half to make two straps, okay? So the first thing we need to do is to um, make our piece to go on top of our strap. So if you have the Clover Bias Tape Maker, this is the blue one, it's a number 25, we're going to slide our fabric in here it will help if you 
make that into a point. So again, I'm just gonna barely snip that off right there so that I have a point. And we're gonna slide that in there. And you will need a stylus or tweezers or something that you can put inside there to kind of help pull that through. It's almost there. Once it gets started, what I like to do is to just lay it down on my board and put a pin in it. Then as you pull, you can just press. So whether you're with a regular iron or I have a little craft iron here and just pull that along and it will just press that really easy for you. If you don't have the bias maker, then you're simply going to press under about a quarter of an inch on each side of your strap. So you wanna do that to both straps, whichever method you're using. And then just take your strap and I like to use the seam -a seam and I just take a piece of it, break it off, and I'm just going to quickly press that right down the middle. There is a paper lining on this. So I'm just going to press that. Don't worry if you don't get it exactly in the middle. You'll, you're, we're just putting this on here to help hold our turquoise fabric in place. makes it a little bit easier. If you don't have this, then you can pin your turquoise fabric in place and then you'll just have to really watch and take your pins out as you're going along. So once you have that pressed on there, you're just gonna peel that paper off like that and your piece is going to be a little bit tacky so take your turquoise fabric try to center it on here there we go and then just again give that a quick press and that's going to hold that in place we're going to do some decorative stitching on here to make our handle really pop. Okay, so this is a good time to pause the video and work on your handles. Once we get these fused on, then we will go to the sewing machine and we'll do our decorative stitching. One of my favorite things about the Foff brand is the exclusive stitch techniques that they have. We are going to do the radiant stitches today on our handle. If you have never done the radiant stitches before, I would suggest that you watch the tutorial first. So the tutorial can be found in the book icon up here that opens up techniques and tutorials. Go to sewing techniques and then radiant stitches and watch that video and practice a little bit before you try to do it on your handles. The other thing that I'm going to show you with our radiant stitch, and I am going to go to category eight, so scroll over until you get to eight, which is techniques, and then we are going to go to subcategory six, down there on the side, and we are going to choose stitch number eight. Now it looks a little different on our screen because if you've watched the tutorial, then you understand that we have to do some um, moving of our fabric as we do our radiant stitches. On your screen, it doesn't really accommodate for that movement of your fabric. So it looks a little different on your screen than what it's gonna actually look like when we stitch it out.
we're also going to use our projection. So we've used projection quite a bit throughout this tote bag. I hope you're, you're really realizing the benefit of that feature on your creative icon too. So I am going to turn on the projection and I am going to switch the camera over to the needle area. We are going to be using both Stitch Guide 1 and Stitch Guide 2. Stitch Preview we can turn off and the grid we can turn off. So if those are on, you can turn both of those off and then just kind of collapse those so that they're out of your way. And we are gonna use both Stitch Guide 1 and Stitch Guide 2. So I'm gonna move the camera over to the needle area so that you can see how we're gonna set those up. We have used the, the projection quite a few times, so I think that you'll be able to set it up without the camera view on the screen. It's gonna be more important that you see it, I think, on the bed of the machine. I have my machine threaded with the rayon embroidery thread and an embroidery bobbin back in, and I have attached the 2A foot, which is the recommended foot for the radiant stitches. Place your strap underneath your foot and center your foot on your turquoise fabric at, the, at one end of your strap. And I'm gonna show you how the projection lines, our stitch guidelines, will help us keep our radiant stitches nice and straight and exactly where we want them. So here I have one strap that's been completed so that you can kind of see what we're going for. So we're doing our radiant stitch all the way down our strap to hold that turquoise fabric in place and just add a pop of color on there. So to get started, we are going to turn on our stitch guide one. So if you have any other projections on like your grid or your stitch preview, you can turn those off and collapse them so that the menus are out of your way and open Stitch Guide 1. I'm gonna turn it on. You can see my red line. I am going to leave the color red because it seems to be showing up okay on the fabric, but I am going to plus the width of mine all the way up to eight, which is the widest, so that it shows up a little bit better. If you want to plus yours, that's fine, or you might be able to leave it right where it was. Now, if you kind of scroll down a little bit on your window, you'll see that we have vertical position and horizontal position. I am going to adjust the horizontal position and you have an arrow to the left and an arrow to the right. I'm gonna use my arrow to the right and I'm just going to keep moving my line. Do you see it moving on my fabric? I'm just gonna keep moving that until it is right at the edge of my turquoise fabric, okay? If you have your foot down and your needle down activated, then I want you to just turn your fabric and we are going to open Stitch Guide 2. So you can see I have my belt strap going the opposite direction now. I'm going to turn on Stitch Guide 2 and you might need to scroll up a little bit on your screen, but we have an angle option. Touch in that white box, it probably defaulted to zero degrees. Just touch in that box and you'll get the little keypad and we are gonna type in 90 degrees. So now it's going the opposite direction. And on this one, I'm going to adjust the vertical position and I am going to bring it towards me so that that line lines up again right with the edge of my turquoise fabric. So if you have practiced your radiant stitches a little bit or if you have done them before, you know that you have to turn your fabric frequently to achieve the desired effect of our radiant stitch. So there is a stop built into the stitch file. That's what makes these patented and exclusive. You're only gonna get them on your Foff sewing machine. 
And as we turn back and forth, when I'm in this rotation, I'm going to have one line right along the edge of my turquoise fabric. But when I turn, I'm going to have the other line right along the edge of my turquoise fabric. So that is really going to help me keep everything straight and lined up. Now again, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and start with my stitch. So I'm going to close my projection window and I'm going to start stitching. It's very important when you do your radiant stitches that you use your start stop button. Because there is a stop that's programmed into that stitch, when you use your foot pedal, sometimes it's hard to know if the machine stopped by itself or if you stopped the machine. So just use your start stop button. And I find this to be very relaxing. I'm gonna start stitching. It's gonna stitch a little ways and I'm watching my line over here to make sure it stays right along the edge of my fabric. Once it stops, we need to rotate. And now I'm gonna look at my other line and make sure that it is lined up along the edge of my fabric and I'm gonna start stitching again. This is gonna do the decorative element of my radiant stitch. When it stops, we're gonna turn back straight. I'm gonna watch that line here, make sure it's parallel, and I'm gonna touch my start stop again. Now this time, I'm gonna turn the opposite direction. I want my decorative element to alternate between going this way and going this way. Whichever direction the back of your foot that is the direction that that decorative element is going to go. So on my first decorative element, it came, it's, it's coming towards me right here. So now I want it to go away from me. So I want the back of my foot, that's the direction it's going to go. So press my start stop. When it comes back, I'm going to turn my strap again line that line up with the edge of my fabric and stitch again. So this time I'm turning the opposite direction, lining my line up with the edge of my fabric. And we're just going to keep doing that all the way down both straps. And again, I find this to be very relaxing, just kind of mindless stitching here. Just pay attention that you're turning your handle the right direction so that your decorative element alternates. So again, I'll show you this one and you can see how it alternated all the way down my strap. Okay, so this is a good time to pause the video and complete both straps. All right, I have both of my straps done. And what I wanna do now is turn off my projection and we are gonna choose a decorative stitch to go down the center of our strap. So we have that kind of straight line that was our traveling stitch in between our decorative elements. And we're just gonna put a satin stitch over the top of that. This is a great opportunity to add some extra embellishment to your to your stitch. So open your stitch menu and we are going to go back to menu one. So that is our utility stitches. So go to menu one and we are gonna choose stitch number 12. Stitch number 12 is a satin stitch. Open your edit stitch at the bottom of your screen and we're gonna adjust the width of that so just minus it all the way down to three. We don't want it to be too wide. I just want it to cover that straight stitch and make a little bit more decorative element. So just line the red line that's in the center of your 2A foot with that straight stitch and just simply sew that zigzag stitch all the way down. You're going to go all the way down both straps. 
just to give that an extra little pop. All right, we are ready to put our tote bag together. So we are just about done. Let's review the pieces that we have. So we should have two handles that you've done your decorative stitching on and done your satin stitch down the center. We've got two pieces of the outside of our tote bag. The first one has our pocket on it, it's our outside pocket, and our other one has our decorative stitching on it. Then we have two lining pieces. One piece has our inside pocket on it, and the other one is plain, okay? And then we should have our um, extra piece of of um, binding that we made and in your packet you should have a little uh, clip so we're just going to slide that clip onto that and we're going to attach that in a side seam in a little bit just to give you a place to hook your keys onto so I'm going to set that aside right now so what I want you to do is at the bottom of all four of your pieces so make sure that your four pieces are all going the same direction that we have the tops up okay so make sure on all pieces that the top part is up make sure that your lining pieces are going the right direction everything should line up on the sides okay so your lining pieces Sometimes they're a little bit harder to tell, especially this one, because it has nothing on it. It's hard to tell which direction. So just line it up. Make sure they're all going the same direction, okay? Then what we're going to do is down in the bottom corner of all four pieces, we are going to make a two-inch square. So if you will just draw a two-inch square, on all four pieces in both corners okay so you can see on this one I've got two squares drawn one in each bottom corner we're going to do that on all four pieces and then cut them out okay so you should have all four pieces with that two inch square cut out of the bottom corner So now that we have those done, what we want to do is take our front pieces and you want to find the center. For me, the easiest way to do that is to simply fold it in half and just kind of finger press it right there. And then I'm going to put a pin in there. And now we're going to take our handle and we're going to place it right side down. And we want to be two and a half inches from that pin. So I'm just going to place it at that two and a half inch mark and pin it in place. And do the same thing over here. Two and a half inches, place my handle and pin it in place. And you're going to do that with both handles one on your um, tote bag front and one on your tote bag back. And then just stitch across the top to hold those in place. So on this one, you can see I've placed it here and I have stitched across the top. Now we're going to place a lining piece right sides together with the top and just pin that in place you're going to do that on both pieces so you'll take your other outside piece and place those right sides together And then we are going to stitch just across the top with a half inch seam allowance. So once you have those pinned in place, you can take that back to your sewing machine and stitch across half inch seam allowance. 
Okay, once you have sewn those pieces together, so we've got our lining and our outside piece sewn together with our handle, you want to open that up and kind of finger press that seam towards the lining, okay? It's better to press from your fabric side, so I would then turn it over and just give that a little bit of a press and you're pressing just reach under there make sure it's going the right direction you're just going to press that and if you flip your handles down that will make it easier because it naturally makes that underside seam go the right direction okay once you've pressed that a little bit then you're going to take it to your sewing machine and you're going to do what we call edge stitching or under stitching. So on your lining, you're going to sew really close to the seam. And that's going to stitch that seam down so that it's, it's going towards your lining. And this is going to kind of help when your bag is all finished that your uh, lining doesn't kind of roll to the front. So you're just going to stitch along this close to the seam line on the lining side on both pieces. Once you've finished that, you're going to take your uh, little strap that we made with the ring on the clip on the end of it and just pin it right above the pocket on your lining piece that has the pocket on it. Okay, so you're just going to pin that in place right there. And then we're going to sew these seams together and that's going to get caught in that seam. So once you've done that, we're going to lay these right sides together. You want to make sure that you have your uh, tote bag fronts together and your tote bag linings together. So match that seam right up here at the top. Both of those seams should be going towards the lining piece. So just match that right there and pin it in place. And you're going to do the same thing on the other side so that we make sure that we're getting those tops sewn together at the same spot. And you can add some more pins around the body of your bag. And you're going to sew down your long sides. Do not sew where your corners are. So we're going to leave these corners not sewn. Okay. And on your lining piece, you can sew a little bit in, like maybe... Um, an inch or so in on the bottom piece but then leave the rest of this open and that's how we're going to turn it right side out. So on your lining side we're going to sew just a couple inches across the bottom on each side and keep the center open. Do not sew your squares. So we're going to start here. We're going to sew all the way up our sides and when you get to the other part, again, we're not going to sew the corners, but you are going to sew all the way across here. All right. All right. I have sewn all the way around my tote bag, and now we're going to box our corners. So boxing your corners gives your bag like a straight bottom so it actually holds things better because it it's got that boxed corner so that's what we're going to create right now and that is why we cut out those squares on the corners so all we're going to do is take this and open it up and match that seam so open it up with your fingers Just get in there and open that seam up. And that will lay nice and straight. 
and you can just pin that just like that and then you're going to take it to the sewing machine and you're going to sew right across there with a half inch seam allowance. I've already gotten it sewn on the other two corners so you're going to do this to all four corners. So as you can see my seam matches up and I've just sewn across with a half inch seam allowance. Okay, I've boxed all my corners. Now all you're gonna do is reach your hand in that opening that we left in the lining and gently pull everything out so that your tote bag is right side out. There's a lot of fabric here, so that's, just take your time and get that all pushed out. And it will be tight. Just keep working it. It'll come, I promise. There we go. Use your fingers and get those corners pushed out good. Get my other corners out. And you can go back to your sewing machine and just stitch that opening closed, tuck it down inside and your tote bag is completed. Wasn't that fun? There we go. You are all done. If you want to top stitch around the top, you can do that. Just give it a good press and then you could do a top stitch all the way around that top edge. Good job. I hope you enjoyed making your tote bag. As you put into practice all of the features that we learned about on your new Creative Icon 2. Have fun.